Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It's uh, getting near that festive time of the year. I'm not doing a video on the imp today. There is the imp. Um, the imp videos went out last week. I don't know. No, last month, last, I can't remember. It's crazy. Um, do you like my Jason Plato hat? It was reduced. So I did a video on the imp, two videos on the imp. They seem to be going down well, actually. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how they would, how I wanted them to go out. Yeah, and how they came out, maybe two different things. But the imp is there, and uh, I haven't actually done much on it, although it is on the ground, as you can see. So it's now on the deck, that's progress. But I'm not here to talk about that today. What we've got to talk about is burnout. And I don't mean burnout like doing a burnout with your limited slip diff or a single tyre burnout, if you have an open diff. Um, it's knowing when to say enough's enough. It's knowing when to stick your head up, raise your hand and say, I've taken on too much. I've got too much going on. I'm a bit of a muddled personality. I think one of the things I do quite commonly is take on projects. I'm quite spontaneous and I'll just take things on. I think, oh, that'd be a brilliant idea. Um, without really having much thought gone into it, um, which does get quite tiring for my wife. It's, you have to be like that sometimes because that's how you do fun things. That's how you achieve things. Um, but every now and then, having taken on so many projects and got so many wacky ideas in your head, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. You do come down again. And the re part of the reason the channel is called Up and Down, it's not just the suspension on Citroens. Um, it's kind of the general web and flow. You're out, sometimes you're up and then other times you're down. Um, I'm not necessarily down any more than I normally am. I'm always a bit of a mopey, grumpy so-and-so, but I'm definitely on a down in terms of motivation and ability, output. Because when your motivation's down and your confidence is down, you don't get as much done. So definitely suffering from a little bit of burnout, not just creator burnout, you do get creator burnout. I'm not a proper YouTuber, but I'm, I hear proper YouTubers talk about creator burnout. I can see what they mean. There are times where I also feel like that, but I'm not talking about that so much. I, I've got enough content to get out there. Most of it's C5 videos that no one wants to see anymore. So what I've done is I've sat and I've made a spreadsheet, which I quite like doing, I'm quite good at spreadsheets. And I've used some formulas, um, but I've also used a fair bit of head and heart in it and f to try and figure out what cars I have that I don't need. Because if you add up the number of cars I've got, which is myself personally, nine, and then two more in the household I'm in care of, 11, and then two more at work I'm in care of, 13, that's getting a bit silly. If you add up 13 cars, how many of those cars are road going working cars? The two of the household. Uh, I mean, I took the BX off the road, the Mark 1 BX. If I hadn't taken that off the road, that would have counted as well because that was road worthy. And that's it. And that's a silly position to be in because cars are there for driving. With that in mind, I've come to a decision and it's not the first decision. There will be more probably that follow it, but I have to make some tough calls. Um, so the first tough call I've made is that there are two cars I've not really shown properly and introduced to any, uh, to any of you, um, which I'm gonna get rid of. And this is basically a quick video as to my reasons why. And if anything, if it helps anybody identify and deal with that kind of burnout feeling you get when you've, you realize that you've almost hoarded, you've taken on too much, you've, you've overfaced yourself, you've gone to a buffet, you've filled a plate, you've eaten it, you've gone back, you've filled another one, and you're thinking, I'm not gonna finish this. And that's where I am. With that in mind, um, say hello to the two cars I'm getting rid of. Not that one. I've got my thumb over. Uh, a Reliant Fox and another Citroen BX. Um, the Reliant Fox is a silly one because I've not even done a video on it yet. I've had it how long? I've done nothing with it. I mean, I haven't had it as long as the BX. I've had that even longer. But enough is enough. 
I have to ask myself what I'm going to do with these cars. What is their purpose? And it's a bit of a tricky one to answer because they don't really have a purpose. And if they don't have a purpose, I mean, let's look at them. It's subject, sorry, look at them objectively. Let's, let's take heart stuff out of it, head stuff only, because you, if you're going to take control of your own head, you have to take your heart out of it straight away. So yeah, two cars to go. Ignore the chim on the ramp. That's not going anywhere. I am going to keep that, don't worry. Well, we might sell it one day, but. So we've got, this car is silly because I've made a video on this car and it was all ready to rock. In fact, it would have been uploaded by now. Yeah, it would have been all right, but the SD card glitched. And I lost a lot of footage and I lost momentum with it. So that one never got done. I filmed it about a month and a half ago. Um, but that is a BX GTI 16 valve. That's a rare motor. I mean, these are both rare motors, but that's a rare motor. That is a uh, 1987 built Citroen BX GTI 16 valve. So that is officially, officially, according to my geek uh, database that I have, that is the oldest BX16 valve in the country. Genuinely. Um, unofficially isn't, because I know there are some slightly earlier ones, but they're not road registered. I think one of them's been converted into a race car. Um, one of them is very likely earlier, but the date code that was normally printed on the car has disappeared, so there's no proof of when it was actually made. This car was built in November 1987. You don't get many 1987 BXs, uh, BX 16 valves, sorry. And as a result, that is badged as a GTI 16 valve uh, because they didn't call them BX, just BX 16 valve until late 1988, mid 1988. Yeah, I think it was late 88, possibly even 89. It was before the phase two came out. A lot of phase, most phase ones are still known as BX 16 valve, but this one has the GTI badging on the back with a little 16 valve. Um, I'm gutted. I don't want to sell it. This one's known as Meg because the original number plate had Meg in it, but the previous owner removed that. Um, it's basically a project. Uh, if it wasn't a project, it wouldn't be such a problem. It needs no more work than your average 1980 whatever BX 16 valve that's done 140,000 miles and has been used a lot would need, certainly nothing out of the ordinary. The problem is I have three Citroen BXs and how many Citroen BXs does one person need? You don't need one, let alone three. Uh, one of my BXs I'll never sell. The other one, the Mark I, I'll keep for the foreseeable just because it's it's no harm keeping it. I enjoy driving it and it's, it's pretty decent. And it works pretty well. This one needs a lot of work. This would be a decent car under this, without a doubt, but it needs a lot of work. It needs welding at the back. It needs the side skirts removing um, in the rear corners. Uh, a little tiny bit of tickling at the front, up in the inner wings where they normally go. A little bit on the A pillar. No doors hanging off it or anything like that. The um, the doors on BXs normally fall off, but this one pretty good. In fact, there's no play in it at all. That's me slipping. Remote central locking works on this one. So I mean, it's great, but I just, I can't do it. it. It's the amount of time it would take for me to do it. It's not like it's ever gonna be worth huge money. So it's not like, oh, you put all the, put all the effort in and you'll be rewarded. You wouldn't necessarily be rewarded um, financially because it was, what's it worth? Without a respray, just with sort of localized treatment because the paint's quite tired. Uh, Three and a half, four thousand, something like that. They're not worth huge money. Um, people only want BXs generally if they're done up and they're mint. Um, the 16 valve, the phase two, that's worth a fair bit more. They, for some reason, I mean, people like the looks, I suppose, but the phase two is worth more. Um, it looks quite different to the phase one and they are quite popular, but I can't do it. I have to face facts. I would have to weld that car up do the valve stem seals, do the cam belt. Um, and it runs fine. Suspension seems to work quite well. Runs quite happily, zippy little engine, blowing a little bit of blue smoke on startup, which will be valve stem seals. It's very common on these that the, the seals go hard and uh, you leak um, oil into the valves, uh, into the ports down the stem, hence valve stem seal. Um, that, I'm not worried about that. You know, it's, it's a common thing. I mean, you pretty much, if they, ha if you find a BX that age, it hasn't had them done, it will need them doing. 
you don't have to do it it just means when you first start every morning you get a little tinge of blue smoke out the back once it's done it once it's warmed up it doesn't do it anymore so um so, but yeah you, you take the head off anyway get it all cleaned up get it decoped get it refaced new head gasket new inlet manifold gaskets very important on these cars because vacuum leaks really do play havoc with how they run so you want it to be right and you pop in some new valve stem seals at the same time i would think you just take it apart change the gaskets change the seals clean it up put it back together i don't think you'd need to do any more than that then you put the cam belt on because obviously you've got to take the cam belt off to do all that you probably do a water pump as well um and that's all it really needs on on there i mean the clutch feels fine the gearbox feels fine brakes are good no suspension leaks i can see i've been underneath it and, and filmed the detailed underneath assessment of it as part of that video i was doing before but the, the main job it's going to need is the back end it needs the back axle taking off the subframe uh, complete which is actually only four bolts and a few pipes it's not that big a deal um, but then you've got to do a bit of welding where it mounts up it's not by far not the worst one i've seen uh, there's plenty left there to, to go by some cars there's hardly anything left and you have to kind of design it uh, this one it's not but it's it, it's still going to be weeks and weeks and weeks of work for me because i'm not going to be able to work on it all day every day and it'll tie up a ramp and then i'll sell it for pretty much what it will cost me to do it and i can't keep it because i need the space so it's just completely pointless for me to do it however much i like it i have other cars if someone says to me do you want to work on that would you want to work on the sm i'd rather work on the sm that goes above everything so as much as i like that car it, it needs someone else to do it someone who actually wants to restore one and have one so if you're interested in a citroen bx gti 16 valve um a very honest one uh then let me know it won't be huge money i mean as a frame of reference i believe um i can't remember what jack said he paid for number 27 i can't remember what he said he paid for the tomato uh, but i think i told him that a project phase one with scabby paint probably would be about the 1500 pound region and that car with everything i've thrown at it doesn't owe me more than that i mean i don't pay much for this car at all i got it quite cheap um there's a faff to go and get it i think <laughs> i think it would have cost more in the in the labor if you were counting that to pick it up but even with everything else i've done on it since just to get it running and and, and moving um moving around happily and raising up and down and whatnot yeah it still doesn't owe me more than 1500 quid so it will be offers there or thereabouts you know make me an offer um I, the thing i'm more bothered about is that it goes to a good home because the lady i got this car off had owned it since 1989 and had it as their everyday car so it's only like a two owner car um in fact i still haven't got the v5 for it because it didn't come with one it did come with one but it had the wrong registration number on it because it was the one from before the reg number was taken off they said the original registration for this car got removed which is kind of annoying um and retained she retained it for her other car so it, it's got a perfectly i mean it's you wouldn't know it's another e-reg plate but uh I th you know i think i couldn't use the v5 that was supplied with it because it was the wrong one and she said she didn't get a newer one so basically you need to apply for a v5 so i'll knock 25 pound off straight away to cover the cost of that you basically just have to apply for a v5 um i filled the form out and everything but the problem is DRL only take checks it's two, it's 2021 <laughs> you know I, I can't find my checkbook i haven't got a checkbook you know so um yeah in fact i'll pop the bonnet open for you you can have a look inside yeah there we go so yeah the paint is it's this is all dirt it's it's not too bad under this um but there are scratches and things like that uh it's got some dings and some scrapes it's, it's got a little bit of battle damage a bit of bit of a dent there you can't really see because it's dark there's some chips here which have so deep they've turned to rust they're not it's just surface there's you know it's perfectly solid but it, it if you wanted it to be really nice you'd give it a full repaint i don't think it needs a full one i think you'd get away with um localized bits but there is the beast there is the engine 160 horsepower uh, and they do make it they're good for it um yeah it runs really well it's got some interesting modifications to the fuel system i don't know what the hell that thing's supposed to be but it'd go in a bin if i was working on it new spheres all round but as you may have seen on jack uh the number 27's video um these ones are the wrong ones and it bounces a little bit too much 
but yeah it's good as gold it doesn't sort of spew coolant or anything like that it runs it starts um yeah it's a shame I, I i'm really i really like it i really like it but it's just you have to know when to say no you have to know when to stop see if i can fire it up from here it should in theory there you go Just like that. There you go, got my light out. So yeah, got original paint code down there. You see the, the there's a little bit of rust. Just under the ABS pump, there's a bit of a hole down there. They're all quite easy to do. That's a massive hole, but that's meant to be there, don't worry. Bit of a belt noise coming from here. I don't know if that's drive belt or timing belt, but something's a bit tight. Uh, it, it probably just, it, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it has had a timing belt done. She spent a lot of money on this car. They're just so zippy. They're so responsive. It's just one of the truly great engines, this. Blue connectors spells danger. And uh, yeah, there's some iffy connections there because sometimes it won't start. And then you wiggle those connectors and it does. But yeah. Quite, um, yeah, it'd be quite sad to see it go, but I just want this to go to a good home. I'm so nervy about it going to the wrong place. What I don't want to do is is you find out that it just goes somewhere and then someone breaks it for parts or something yeah for me i just I, I want to see that restored but beggars can't be choosers and i can't be the one who does it i just i cannot do it anymore and another car i cannot do is that so why did i buy the fox um i don't actually know at the moment i'm kind of um, i think i got a bit carried away with things i think i saw I saw it up for sale and I thought, oh, I quite like that. But I've, I remember when I first saw Fox Anne, when Ian bought that, the, my, honestly, my, my overriding instinct, and, and I think, you know, we should always be honest, my overriding instinct was just what a hideously ugly little car. <laughs> it really is just the gawkiest thing. It, it's just the, the proportions of it are just a joke. But it was almost like it was so silly, it was appealing. And I imagine that's what led Ian to it. There are things I like about this car. I like the fact it's a Reliant for a start. I like Reliant. I, I like what they were about. Um, there was some good engineering going on. And there are bits of this car I like. I like the double wishbone front suspension. Less so the back suspension, but the front suspension, double wishbone, pretty good. The engine isn't in it, but I like the engine, an all aluminium engine. Everything is dinky. I mean, have you seen the size of the radiator? I mean, there's the engine bay in the Fox. Look at that radiator. That's ridiculous. Look how small. Let's move you in so you can see. There's the top hose. There's my thumb. I mean, it just about fits inside it and I don't have big hands at all. Everything on it is just so ridiculously diddy and sweet. Um, I really, it really appealed. Uh, I, you know, there's, there's just some things I really like about it. But, <laughs> and there was always a but, I just don't need this car. I have no need for it at all. We bought it for the, for the business. Um, and I think maybe lockdown was doing funny things to us, but or to me, because it was my decision. But there's just no need for it. Even when it's all done, if I spent all the time and all the effort and all the money doing the things I wanted to do to it, if I do all that, what are you going to have at the end of it? I'm going to have a two-seater fiberglass pickup that leaks and is very slow. And yes, it might be a lot of fun, but when you walk out your house in the morning and you decide what you're driving to work in, will it be a Citroen C6 or will it be this? I like it. I think the colour is absolutely cracking. I think that's one of the reasons I, I liked it so much. I forget what it is. It's a kind of like a bluey grey. Um, the bodywork is, is, is actually okay. It's, uh, it's been coach painted, so it's actually done with a brush. Um, I don't know why he did that, the, the last guy who worked in it, but that's what he did. 
Um, but it's actually pretty good in places. It's quite a tough paint, but he says it needed redoing. And there are, there, there's quite a lot of, if you look up close, you'll see imperfections and what looks like osmosis. I don't think it is, but it's what looks like it. And there's sort of issues with, because it's GRP. I mean, not being funny, but GRP is not amazing for, for an everyday car. So yeah, it, it's, I say the color, the color um, I like the look of, it's got, uh, I think it's got Protec or Gaz coilovers, which are quite worth quite a bit. It's got 13 inch wheels, I think they are. I think they're off a Viva, I think he said they were. Um, and they've been powder coated with new tires, although the new, t well you can't, no, not powder coated with, you don't powder coat things with tires. They've been powder coated and their new tires have been fitted. But the tires are probably on a few years old, excuse me, a few years old now. Um, it would be on an A-Reg. It does have a registration. It does have a V5. It's, uh, it has all its ID. There's a, a VIN plate over there in the corner, which you can't really see. You can just about see it. It's got a seat in the middle. You have to ignore that. That's just perched there. There's not much of a dashboard in it. In fact, there's no dashboard in it. There we go. Um, yeah, there's no dashboard. The dashboard was in bits. He had a custom job in it, hence the big hole in the front there. So you'd have to rebuild that. Um, you might well, just lay some fiberglass up on it. Um, I've actually sourced the dashboard for it, uh, which comes with it. Uh, but otherwise, I haven't really done anything to it. He, he put a lot of effort into it, um, as, well, as far as he got. But, I mean, I can't, we just haven't got the time to put into it. Again, I've got other car, I've got other projects. It's not like I'm getting rid of all my projects, someone else can do them. It's not that at all. I've got other projects. This is one of however many. And I think I have to be, I have to be realistic, I have to be rational. Am I gonna use it? Do I need this? No, I don't. I've got the imp if I want to make small and silly. I mean, I had a fun weekend in Wales, didn't I? But, yeah, so if anyone wants a Reliant Fox project, and it is largely complete, there isn't everything with it. There's no seats, for example. That seat in there was being trial fitted. It's out of an MGF. Um, it does fit, so you could use MGF seats. Um, although it's about as big as seats can get. Um, you, know, you won't get anything bigger in it. But I just, I, it, yeah, I just don't need it. It, it. It's just, and it's not even a case of I don't need it. It, it doesn't make any sense. I did my spreadsheet at the beginning, like I say, and the cars that came out on the bottom of the lit, this came bottom of absolutely everything. You know, there was nothing about it that really makes it worthwhile for me to do. I'm not a, 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 I'm not a Reliant enthusiast. I'm not a Reliant Fox enthusiast. A Reliant enthusiast would love this. A Reliant Fox enthusiast would love this because they only made 600 odd because they were hellishly expensive and not very good. But they would love this. So they should do it. It shouldn't be me prattling about with it. It should be someone who loves it. Um, I love BXs. I do. I love them. But I have three. I don't need three. I don't even need two, really. In fact, do I, nobody needs one. So yeah, you have to know uh, when is the time to go enough. I need to get some of my ducks in a row. And at the moment, they're not. They're quacking all over the pond. I have too much going on trying to run a business, trying to prat around making videos on YouTube, which takes a ridiculous amount of time um, what, for what you get out of it. The TVR up on the ramp there, which I would much rather put my time into. I, I mean, I know them. There's nothing to learn from me on that car. I just need the time to do it. The Fox, I know nothing about them. I'd have to learn everything. The BX, I know about, but I'm doing everything I've already done once before or twice before or will need to do again. So it's not enjoyable because it's something I'm not going to even if I did do the work I would have to sell it anyway there's no point keeping it I've got a daily car my C6 which I still haven't got a video done on uh is supposed to be my daily car and it can't get near the workshop because it's full of BXs it's it's a silly state of affairs one of the things I remember from Ian's video when he first got Fox Ann is he said that they weren't cheap. They were really expensive for what they were, considering they've got exposed door hinges and sliding window panes and a very, very basic. Uh, I think they were more expensive than a Metro van. I would rather have a Metro van. I, I mean, because A, that's a proper car, but also I like Metros. I think I'd rather have a Metro van than that. If someone said, do you want to swap it for a Metro van? I'd say, yeah. So why am I doing that? If, you, if there's something you'd rather swap it for, 
swap it for that or just sell it. So yeah, that needs to go to someone who loves those or who, I mean, people who are into Reliant, so Reliant fans, they seem to be, I'm not one of them. I'm not really of that ilk. Um, I've only just joined up the, the, the groups and things and they are slightly different um, in many ways in the same way that Citroen enthusiasts are slightly different, but I'm not one of them, but they love their cars. They love the Reliant stuff and they only made 600 odd of those. That is a rare motor. That needs to go to someone who appreciates it, and it's not me. Um, someone who can put the time into it. It's a tiny little car, so you can do it in a single garage. Uh, the body is just plonked on the chassis at the moment. It's not bolted together. It will come apart dead easy. The chassis is in good condition. It's largely complete. The engine will need work. Um, it's not the original engine for the car. The fella had a Fiat 1.1 engine in it, I think. Uh, so you can put the Reliant engine back in it. Um, but And I've got the Reliant engine in bits but it will need work, it will need the crank grinding, it will need the, you know, bores um, honing and everything like that, because uh, it's just been in bits for ages. But you do all that and you've got, you've got a cracking motor. We've got spares, I've got looking at them now, I've got gearboxes and body panels and, you know, wishbones and there's a windscreen up there, the doors are in the back. So it's largely everything's there. But, yeah, no, it's not me. I'm not the one to do that. I paid about 1,100 quid. That's what it owes me. I mean, that's not including my uh, trip to Wales, but it owes me about 1,100 quid. So I'm trying to get as close to that back as I can. Um, it came with a little trailer I could say, well, it didn't come with that. I had to buy that trailer on the way there. Um, I could say the little trailer as well, the one I took to the Hubnut Social. And you can have the whole rig, as Ian called it, the package. You can tell he plays Euro Truck Simulator. So this one, uh, uh, yeah, more like 15-ish, something like that. Um, I'm not greedy with it. I have to price it so that it keeps it out of the vultures, um, out of the hands of the vultures who would have it for parts or whatever, uh, you know, but at the same time, I'm realistic. You know, if you want to restore that car, fully restored, absolutely gone through and 100% mint, I mean, that's what, eight, nine grand's worth of car at most. So it doesn't give you a huge amount to play with, you know, uh, 5,000 pounds of labor doesn't go very far in 2021. Yeah, that car there, nearing the 15, that one, 11-ish. Both complete, they just need time and love. Uh, unfortunately, it ain't gonna be me. I haven't got the time to do it. So there we go. That's why it's important. You have to know um, when you've bitten off more than you can chew. And I have now bitten off more than I can chew. The SM goes nowhere. The Imp goes nowhere. Well. Not yet, maybe in a couple of years. Um, some of the other Citroens and things, nowhere. Uh, TVR, I mean, I would quite like to get that on the road before I even thought about selling that. Um, we, you know, I've not even used it. It's just been sat here for a couple of years. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's that. Stage two of the clear out, because it might be stage two as well. Um, Red Iveco van. I know, don't shoot me, don't hate me. People have already, I've mentioned this on Twitter that I might do that. You can follow me on Twitter, I'll put the link. There's, you won't get anything interesting out of it, but I don't know if you can see the red Iveco van there. Oh, there's a crazing on the roof, look. That's not frost, that's the lacquer. Um, the red Iveco van. <laughs> it was a, sh <laughs> the Fiat van that we had needed a clutch doing, it needed work and it was beat to death. So it wasn't worth a huge amount of money. And I found a guy who had an Aveco van, and I quite like that. And although he said, well, the Fiat's worth a lot more, I said, no, the Fiat's beat, it's beat to death, it needs a clutch. So I would, it's not worth much money. We can swap them straight if you want. I think he felt bad at, at just doing it straight. He basically, I talked myself out of money. Um, I said, no, no, it's fine. Um, and that Fiat van, you know, in many ways, decent motor, but it needed the clutch doing. I did not fancy doing that. It needed a, every panel and it was beaten up. It was just hard work, uh, hard work to van. Um, the Iveco, Vecchi, uh, I figured that mechanically it was pretty sound, which it is, because there's not really much to go wrong with it, but it would need a bit of welding, but the amount of welding it needs is just, I mean, you, you cut one panel out and you realize that the other panel that that's supposed to attach to isn't there anymore. And neither is the one after that. And you think, ah, okay. And, it's supposed to be a working vehicle. It's supposed to, that's why there are chassis piling up here because we've got a van to drive them down to Poland. So I need to think about that. Should I just be 
getting rid of that and buying a van for like, you know, a slightly less interesting transit or something for 1500 quid. Um, and what's Vecchi worth? Honestly, scrap value probably, I don't know. I mean, it's, it really, I can't imagine it is worth anything. There's that stupid exhaust on it. Um, you have to check that video out. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not at that stage yet with the van, but it's kind of close. The van is skating close to the edge, unfortunately. Um, there are also a couple of other projects, Chevron um, related projects, which may also be skating close to the edge, which haven't been mentioned yet. Big project I had in my head to do, uh, quite an exciting one, something I've always wanted to do. But again, the SM came. And because the SM came, it's knocked a lot of stuff off its perch. It's knocked that off its perch. It's knocked that off its perch. It's knocked the other stuff off its perch. And to be fair, I would go with the SM every time. I would much rather be working on the SM. So there may be others, but stage one, BX16 valve, Reliant Fox. So if you know anyone who's interested, give me a shout. You will see them appear, no doubt. Um, I'm gonna have the joys of dealing with messers and dreamers and time wasters people who bid on things on ebay just because they get a thrill out of bidding not because they actually want to buy something um neither of these are big money i mean 1100 quid 1500 quid doesn't buy you much in 2021 that's pretty much bottom dollar um really you can buy you could might better buy a, a hyundai something or other for 500 quid in the free ads maybe but do you still get free ads now so yeah um but yeah, but for some, for some sort of classics, really, which is what these are, certainly the Fox, uh, and BX is probably modern classic, skating on classic. Yeah, you, you, you don't get much for your money these days. You're getting a complete car there, a complete rare, rare car, uh, very rare. GCI 16 valve badge BX with my geek hat on, which it kind of is, not quite. Plato is not very geeky, is he? I'm going to guess, I would say in the UK, my estimate based on my geek database i have of bx's i reckon there's about 10 of them with that badge 10 of them badged in that spec at most it may be less it may be single figures unfortunately dvla classed them all as gti 16 valves regardless of the year but an actual gti 16 valve i only know of a couple of others let me know if you're interested come straight to me I'm happy to do deals with people would potentially swap for something if it's something road going that I can just sell or use, or a van, you want to swap that for a van, let me know. Um, it hasn't got to be cold hard cash. It can be something more useful than a broken BX that I don't have time to fix. So yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's the Hubnut style walk around of the workshop um, where you contemplate what you're doing with your life. Um, see you in the next one.